Welcome back, friends and iron folks. I have been working on finishing up some unfinished goals before Desert Treasure 2 drops this summer. One of these big goals is to get the Rage 3 pet and complete the challenges for the additional pet transformations. My last TOA related prize video was about three months ago, where we did finally complete Full Missouri, and that means all of the TOA equipment drops too, but I never did get the pet. I do enjoy hunting for boss pets one half time, especially race pets. I have the other two race pets and the transmogs for them, so it would be really nice to complete the race pet set. So I've been working on TOA throughout these last three months on stream at twitch.tv slash ricecope consistently, and at last, I have some huge progress to show you. Let's just say billions were made along the way. So if you are not familiar with my TOA progression, I typically ended up doing level 425 invocation raids because it was consistently doable and it was also fun and the chance of a purple is roughly 1 in 10 and the pet chance being around 1 in 275 pretty solid odds i am roughly 1.5 times dry at the start of the video with all the raids included i try to improve my raids when i'm feeling comfy because this keeps the raid interesting and also improves my odds of getting drops including the pet since they're all point based so it's all about getting the most points per hour. What's the drop? Oh, Missouri body. Hell yeah. Let's go. Damn, the price is definitely really down though. Holy. But nice, dude. That's uh, the second best drop, right? In TOA. Holy shit. And into Missouri chaps. Okay. Well, that's pretty damn sick. Back to back top into bottoms. Hell yeah. I'll take it. Here we go. Something to beefing up this... Yes, let's go. Second best drop ever. All right, I'll take that GP. Oh, I got a fang. Yay. Before we go any further with today's video, I have a question for you. Ever thought about looking for a game to play on the side that is easy to get into and convenient to play? Also at the same time fun? Look no further because Raid Shadow Legend is definitely the game for you. You've heard it many times, but it is playable on both PC and mobile. You can collect over 700 champions for fun various PvE and PvP content in an RPG turn-paced style game. I definitely appreciate the auto battle feature as it allows me to make some solid progress with leveling my champions while I'm busy doing many other things. There are so many ways to improve your champions from different types of gear to different skill upgrades. For the casual players, collecting champions is pretty fun on its own. And for the overachievers, try to assemble a team good enough to complete the hard challenge in raid, the tower. The Arbiter locked away a bunch of fearsome evil foes in the tower, but the seal is weakening after many thousands of years. It is time for someone capable to command a legion of heroes strong enough to ascend the tower. The first episode of Raid, Call of the Arbiter, is out now. To celebrate this awesome new limited series, Raids is going to be adding some of the new characters that you see in the series as champions in game. The fearsome Orc Warlark Artak will be available to everyone just by logging into Raid for 7 days between now and July 24th. New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and you can get a free star pack with this cool in-game loot. Set on your new epic dark fantasy adventure and become the best Raider. Feel free to add me on the Rice Cup, click on that link in the description to get started, and I will see you in the dungeons. So lately, I started learning this technique called Skull Skipping because it increases your points in the raid significantly. So Warden gives the most points throughout the raid because it is the last part of raids. And the last phase of Warden specifically gives the highest concentration of points. So this technique allows me to gain more points. Here's how. There's a mechanic on Phase 3 Warden where every 20% of its HP depleted will make the boss summon skulls that will charge a powerful shockwave that is designed to kill you in one hit. Typically, you want to destroy the skulls quickly so it stops it from happening and he takes extra damage as a rebound, which is an important detail to remember. Skull skipping is a strategy where you let it charge up and send the big attack but if you time it right, you can actually skip that attack. Like the forecast fire gallon attack, you can basically dodge them. Doing this keeps the boss's HP higher, meaning you get more points because you're now doing more overall damage to the boss. At the 400 invocations, 
I get roughly 0.6% more points per raid using skull skipping, and it only takes an extra minute. Normally, I only get 0.3% per minute a raid, which means skull skipping is really worth it. So skull skipping works by starting at a certain distance away from the center as shown in the video here. That entire column of tiles on either side will work for this. The idea is to move toward the center when these skulls explode by clicking on the center. A super easy way to time is to simply spam click attack skulls with a bow or staff and you will move and skip the incoming wave attack when the skulls explode. The only tricky part is when the third and fourth skulls show up. You need to be careful the minions falling boulders because they will be added into the mix. It is a bit of practice or you can tank the boulder if you have a lot of food. You can always practice though in a low invo rate with insanity on only and have try again invo. So that way you can practice for free without much time needed or resources. I also do three down warden on phase two for more points, but after testing it and comparing the point difference, two downing versus three downing, I realized the difference is only 0.15% for an additional minute of work, which is way less points compared to skull skipping. I didn't want a 3 down phase 2 warrant anymore because adding the skull skipping on top would make the raid too slow. I also changed the order of the bosses. I now do Baba first followed by Kefri because they're melee bosses. Super combat is more than good enough. And also Kefri at level 0 and 1 is really nice because you can defeat the swarms really easily during his rest period and you save a lot of time, easily 30 plus seconds per Kefri fight. And I save more time using salt against, of course, Akka and finally Croc. Salting Croc saves quite a bit of time, probably around like at least 30 seconds for me per raid versus using range potions. So it's quite massive. After a lot of experimenting, I did find a setup that achieved a much better points per hour. I ended up ditching overlords and took all the path invocations. I also took the standard power supply for the adrenaline so I can two down phase two warden followed by a life supply from the helpful spirit. This setup ended up being around 405 invocation, but I bumped it to around 450 invo by adding no food needed invo at all, because I realized I only need 10% of the food that I get from the helpful spirit to actually complete the raid consistently. With all this new optimization, I get around the same drop chance, similar pet rate of around one in 285, but the raids are about three minutes faster which means the raids overall only takes 30 minutes now. God damn, level zero is so easy. Holy shit. It's actually crazy how much easier level zero is. I can go reckless. I can be so reckless and kill this guy so fast. Two minutes. Damn, what the hell is that time? Holy shit. 28 four. What? I even skull skip too. Holy shit. Damn, if I didn't skull skip, this warden would have been like freaking five or six minutes or less. So with that out of the way, some other things I want to mention is that the Void Waker is really goddamn good at TOA. I did test it and thought it was solid in my test video when I got the Void Waker, but after extensively using it now for hundreds of raids, I would say this is overall the best spec weapon at TOA with confidence. EGS is still worth bringing for Baba and Croc to land that spec early for the defense reduction though. Also, I tested the Accursed Scepter a lot more thoroughly now, so... With my first impression, theoretically, it was definitely something to bring for TOA, but practically speaking, you probably don't want to bring it for solos because the Accursed Scepter spec, which is reduced defense and magic defense by 15%, pretty reliably, doesn't impact as much if you're soloing. But let's say you're in a big group, like four or five or more people, and especially if your teammates have Sang Staff, if one person Accursed Scepter specs, like let's say Akka, then their Sang Staffs and all the attacks in general will definitely miss less so you'll definitely notice the times will go down a lot more because of the accursed scepter in big groups but yeah small groups not so much all right now back to normal progress for the toa pet oh shit missouri body oh my god damn it's 116 mil uh, you at the armadillo that's like 140 that's kind of stable man it's kind of stable that was our last item but now we've gotten this item like five times Ooh, can I make that? Holy crap. That was so sick. I've never done that before. First raid. Oh, I got a body. Okay, that's... uh. Frick what? This thing has gone down so much, man. Holy shit. 
Ah, no, I blocked it. Let's go. That's the strat, boys. And I'm not even recording. Holy shit. 100% pet RNG is destroyed. Yes, that was that was a good transition. Usually messed that up, but 600 guys, and uh, I am recording. Well, if these were all 400s, we would be officially two times shy. Ooh, nice. But yeah, no, we're not quite there yet. We're close though. We're probably like 1.8. All right, so I only got 6k chaos runes left, and my shadow has like only. Like a few thousand charges left, so I think I'm just gonna plot my character down at the Chaos Rune Shop or uh, the Rune Shop, rather. Yep, I didn't think I'd ever have to do this, but here we are. You know, only a few months after getting the Shadow, we're already out of Chaos Runes. Oh my God, no way! I got a fifth staff. This is actually stupid. Oh my days! I'm never getting this pet. <laughs> well, the thing is, I already dropped. I already dropped one. Great, now, well, I still have four in my bank now. Holy shit. Yeah, we're never getting this pet, because uh, now I'm too lucky uh, when it comes to staffs, you know? Oh my god, I just did it without taking a single meteorite. Holy shit. So much difference, yeah. I mean, 400 is literally twice the chance, So, Like, look at my chance. I mean, I'm, I'm doing 415, so it's a bit a bit higher than 400, but yeah, look, look at my unique percent. 9.51. Right. Oh my god, I actually got it. Let's freaking go. <laughs> Holy shit, we actually got it. Holy, oh my god. Uh, I'm glad I don't have to, uh, you know, do the whole pay for insurance. Oh my god, I actually got it. It's like a little 2x, just uh, around like the 2x mark. Holy shit. All right, let's let's uh, let's let's do the thingy. Use the collection log to um, see here. This should be pet number 30, yeah, actually. This is, um, yeah, that's, that's sick, man. We are, we're now at 30. That's a sick milestone. Cool. Not that we'll ever get to the 52, but, uh, this is one of the best pets that I wanted because it's a rates pet, so. So now that I have the pet, it is time to get the transmogs. There are five transmogs corresponding to the five bosses in rates three, which is Warden, Baba the monkey, Zebba crocodile, Carefree the bug, and Akka the humanoid. To unlock a transmog, you must meet four conditions specific to the transmog challenge. Number one, you must do the raid with all of the respective boss's invocations. Number two, you must fight the boss at level four or higher. Number three, the raid invocation level must be 450 or higher. And number four, everyone in the raid must finish the raid without dying. I already have two of them when I went for the Fang Kit, because the Fang Kit, which is also the 500 TOA challenge, naturally included the Warden and Baba Transmog challenges because it has all their invos. So I did one 500 invo TOA for the Fang Kit a long time ago, which gave me the Baba Transmog. And then I did another 500 for the Combat Achievements, which gave me the Warden Transmog. This means that you can only get one Transmog per raid. Since I've already covered a 500 previously in a prize video, link at the top, we will just cover the remaining three unique challenges. The Zebek Transmog Challenge can also be commonly done in the 500 Bank Kit Challenge, but I just sent the normal Zebek Challenge at 450 Invo. Alright, boys. Okay, sick, 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 sick. Alright, cool. We got the Croc level 4, perfect. It just leveled up. The major mechanical difficulty of this challenge is that Zebek, when it's level 4 or higher, has a insane attack speed. Even the non-enraged attacks are really fast, so you have to make sure you can switch the right prayers while multitasking, moving around, and doing all the mechanics like dodging poison, dodging waves during those special attacks. Enrage phase is super scary as its attacks become so fast that if you mess up and take even one hit off prayer, it's pretty hard to recover from it. Very good chance of failing after that. Good thing I practiced a lot of level 4 Zebek previously on my combat achievements task that was really similar. Yep, there we go. Stay in the middle. For maximal. Oh, this one is so bad. 
Oh my god. That was crazy. Oof. That was crazy, boys. Not gonna lie. Oh shit, I fucked up. I forgot I can't flick it. I'm gonna bro. Oof. All right, we cleared it. Nice, nice. That was cl that was a little scary, man. Totally not used to the level four croc. But uh, we should be okay as long as I don't troll too hard. I should be all right. Two down, please. Nice. Oh my god, that worked out. Nice, we got it. That should be it. That should be it. Damn, we did it with three, four and a half minutes to spare because I'm on a 40 minute timer. Let's go. Sweet. That's one transmog done, but honestly, the last two is definitely going to be like the. Oh, I, and I got a purple too. Oh, <laughs> sick. Let's go. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Give me a ring because I don't really need anything else. All right. So. Oh, a chaps. Holy shit. Damn, and an elite clue scroll. Holy shit. Remnants of Zabak. And a Lee Clue Scroll and a purple. Holy shit, bro. We are feasting today. Holy. That's a feast. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's crazy. Next was Kefri. Soft go run, walk the path, pathfinder, and then the, the standard stuff on. Also, a dehydration is on for this one. I think I'm gonna take a risk and go with this. There we go. Kefri's level four, so that's really nice. I was pretty nervous about this one because I have the least experience dealing with the mechanics called Medic, which consistently spawns swarms that will make its way to the boss and heal it for a massive amount. Letting even one swarm go through will heal it something around like 50 to 100 plus HP depending on the scale. The difficult part is learning how to juggle between killing the healer swarms while dodging the boss's faster bomb attack because it's a higher, higher level, and the minions too as well when they show up. And also managing the boss's poop line stacks. Oh. I'm glad I uh, did that though. Alright. Oh, what? No, 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 no. Why did I do that? Oh, no, I trolled. Because if you spawn the poop line at really bad spots, you can block your ability to move around and kill the healers. And then it's GG. Oh shit. Luckily the Tebow went ham on the range minion and I killed it quickly when it usually is slow without melee. Because I could not reach it with melee since I messed up that poop stack. Woo. Ah, please just kill it. Oh, we did it. Nice. Okay. My prayer sucks though, but I do have a liquid adrenaline, so. Uh, we should be okay now. Nice. Okay. Just Warden now. Sweet. Just Warden and we are good to go. Okay. I didn't think I was going to want to done it on a solo attempt, but... So for this challenge, I turn on dehydration to meet the requirements, which means something like Brewers and Ambrosias won't work. But it's okay. Karis OP. Lots of prayer from life. So we will be fine. Oh, hell yeah. No damage on the uh, last phase Warden. Okay. All right, boys. Medic was hot doggy. So I am so happy that we uh, just won and done that one. But yes, we got it. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, yeah, let's go. The last challenge was the Haka Transmog. And uh, yeah, this uh, reduced a little bit of food. Walk the path, Pathfinder on. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward, though. Double trouble is on. Keep back is on. Those two I, I have to put on, of course. Akka is level 4, and I have insane amount of supplies. Oh my god, and look at this. And we also have Liquid Adrenaline, too. But I could Panic Heal if I want, as well. Yeah, this is looking really good. I, I definitely want this. This one is the hardest, or second hardest, Transmog of Raw. The additional invos I had to deal with was Double Trouble and Keep Back. Double Trouble is really annoying to learn as it is very easy to spawn orbs on yourself while dealing with the Simon Says ability and easily killing you. I did a ton of practice in my original Foundry run, so it was fine, but it is definitely the hardest single invocation in TOA, period. 
Lastly, Keep Back is troublesome to learn as well because when it's ranging or maging you, it can also do additional high damaging melee hit right before the standard attack if you stand next to it. So you need to learn when to move away or learn to time flicking the protect melee prayer. Luckily, Butterfly Kiting Method with Shadow lets me negate most of the Keep Back mechanic. It's so much nicer with the shell because when I did the 500 before, I did not have a shadow, so I could not really butterfly. So the keep back mechanic only works when it is in the melee form. And with the butterfly, I can keep it in the melee form for a super long time. It is best to learn when to move away as it won't hit you with melee at all. All right. Sick, I got so lucky. Yes, okay, I think we're, we're good to go. Yes, we cleared this bad boy. Let's go. Awesome, we did it. <sighs> Double trouble, knockback, everything. Krog is level 3, it's not level 4, which means I have to seriously try really hard to mess this up. There you go, and then we just grab this, and we're good to go. All the food in the world, we couldn't possibly fail this now, you know? And there it is! Oh my god, I actually won and done the Akka. Okay, so I was right. The perfect Akka from uh, Grandmasters was definitely a lot harder than this, so... Well, I guess uh, I, I worry for nothing, you know? I worried for absolutely nothing, because we freaking won and done... We pretty much won and done them all uh, when it came to soloing it. So the Croc, we kind of won and done it. Bug one, we kind of won and done it. And this one, we kind of won and done it. Wow. There it is, Remnants of Akka. <laughs> Yes, so as you can see here on this log, the only thing we're missing now is the capes, which... I'll run some uh, community events here and there, and, and maybe we'll get to a 2000 one day. Very happy to know I can handle pretty much any of the mechanics adequately to complete all the TOA challenges. But there's also, of course, the capes too. Every raid has the 2000 KC cape for collection log, but yeah, the cape stuff, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So, for the most part, we're kind of wrapped up with TOA for a long time. Maybe one day we can get the capes, but yeah, not anytime soon. So, it's time to go one at a time. Alright, so we got this first, I believe. This was... I think it was this one we got first, from the, the fan kit grind. So, we're going to add this in order that we got it. Yay, new metamorphosis! Let's go! Alright, we're going to do the uh, bubby. Okay, next one is the Remin. Yes, okay. Now we can... Uh, oh, we, we get to choose. Oh my god, no. You get to choose way more. Four options. That's actually insane. You get four goddamn options. Ooh, the floating one, eh? Zebak next. Yay. Okay, we added... Now we're gonna get Zebo or Zebo. Damn, it's it's a very, very flat crocodile. Let's see. It's got the weirdest walk animation, I gotta say. Damn, that's hilarious. Okay, next is Carefree. I think this one has probably the sickest animation. Look at this thing. It rolls its dung when it's walking. That's so cool. Look at that. It rolls its dung. It doesn't talk. Do you not like me? Are you shy? Would you follow me and not say anything? Why would you follow me? Do not mistake my silence for shyness. Can't we just quietly share the road together? Oh. He just like me. He just like me for real. All right, and we have Akito. Resistance only delays inevitable. So all in all, it took me about 700 tombs of a muska to get all the purples and the pet and all the transmogs. And in total, we made about 8.8 .8 bill as of today's recording. The price of the staffs is the main bulk. Most of the other items prices has dropped a lot, so. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much carried by the staffs. Of course, the resources definitely um, carried a bit as well. 20,000 Drandars is probably like the most notable in terms of resources. And the seats too, like Toe Flax, Snapdragons. I am all loaded on that. But that's about it. Crazy amount of money. We got this first one, of course, the original. And then we got uh, Zarpus. And we got the Rage 3. Right, let's go. All three. But that is the latest progress. Next episode is going to be a very unique episode as I have saved a bunch of stackable clue caskets and keys to hopefully unlock some really nice goodies. See you soon with that.